What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Recently, AMD dropped a new technical preview for their Fluid Motion Frames 2 technology. This will allow you to kind of force install it on different devices, and as soon as it dropped, I installed it on the ROG Ally X because they do promise better latency and better performance using AMD's Frame Gen technology. And with these handhelds on the market with lower end GPUs, we can definitely use something to help us get a better frame rate. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at AMD's Fluid Motion Frames 2 on the ROG Ally X. But before we get started, I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by URCD Keys. I've been using this site for a long time. They offer Steam Keys, Uplay, Ubisoft, but the main thing I usually pick up over here are Windows 10 Pro OEM keys. And right now, if you use code ETA, you can get 25% off, bringing the price down to $17 for that key. And keep in mind, this will also work with Microsoft Office products. We'll use code ETA. As you can see, brought it down to that $17 price mark. Personally, I use PayPal just to have that security. So we'll go ahead and check out. They're going to email that code to you. And now we can use that code to activate Windows 10 Pro. I'm going to head over to my updates and security. We're going to go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm going to change product key. I'm going to paste it in here, choose next, choose activate, and Windows is now activated. We're ready to go. They'll email your code once your payment is processed, and that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. So getting right down to it, like I mentioned, this is a technical preview from AMD. You're not going to be able to update from Armory Crate to get this at the time of making this video. Still a bit early for Fluid Motion Frames 2, but it is working here. And basically what I did was force install the new driver and the new AMD software. And if we open this up, you can see we're kind of on an odd version. It's just the technical preview. Super easy to enable. So from our gaming settings, let's just say Cyberpunk 2077. From here, we've got Fluid Motion Frames 2. Heading over to the AMD website, you can see AMD Fluid Motion Frames 2 technical preview. Moving down a bit gives us a little bit of information on these new AI optimized enhancements. But one thing I was kind of excited about was seeing the performance improvements here because now we've actually got a performance mode setting. Reduce performance overhead for low power devices. And obviously with these handhelds, we are working with low power devices. Auto quality performance for Fluid Motion Frames 2. Lower latency frame generation on a higher end AMD GPU 7900 XTX, 28% lower latency. Uh, Counter Strike 2, 12% lower latency. And if you read through this, we've got the supported graphics hardware. So the RX 6000 and 7000, plus the Ryzen 7000 series processors with Radeon graphics, which is exactly what we have here the Ryzen Z1 Extreme. So we've got that Z1 Extreme. I've allocated eight gigs of VRAM here, and with this driver sideloaded, it's now telling me that I've got that 780M iGPU. Another new improvement with AMD's Fluid Motion Frames 2 is the fact that we can actually use games in borderless full screen now. In the past, with the first version, we had to use exclusive full screen modes, and there are some games that really just don't work properly with this, so having borderless full screen support here is great. If we enable Radeon Chill after enabling Fluid Motion Frames 2, it's automatically going to set the native FPS cap to half of our monitor's refresh rate. And on the ROG Ally X, of course, we can go down to 30 FPS with it, but we've got a 120 Hz free sync enabled display. And what makes this kind of special is in the past with Fluid Motion Frames, we really had no way to set up kind of a V-Sync while using Fluid Motion Frames 1. With this, we can use Radeon Chill instead of V-Sync inside of the game. Oh yeah, and now Fluid Motion Frames 2 works with Vulkan, OpenGL, and DX12. Jumping right into some gameplay, we've got Cyberpunk 2077, 1080p, medium settings, FSR is set to balanced, and right now we do have Fluid Motion Frames completely off. I am using the AMD overlay because this will give me the proper FPS readout when we're using Fluid Motion Frames. I'm in turbo mode with the ROG Ally X and we're hard pressed to hit 60 FPS with it set up like this. Now, of course, at low settings with uh, some more FSR, we can definitely do it. But from my keyboard, I just needed to use the hotkey Alt-R. That's going to bring me into the AMD software. We've got Fluid Motion Frames 2. We're going to go ahead and enable that. For the search mode, I'm going to leave it at auto. But performance mode, I'm going to test out performance real quick and see what happens. 
So before with no frame gen enabled, we were seeing an average of around 56 FPS. We're up in the low 80s right now, but you will notice that frame counter up in the top left hand corner go down every once in a while. And with this technical preview, over on their website, they state that the frame gen lag counter says NA when switching resolutions. Uh, I have not been able to get it to work on the ROG Ally X with this technical preview installed, so I'm not sure if it's just not working completely or if it's something odd with this system here. I've been testing out AMD's frame gen and fluid motion frames on a ton of different devices. One thing I've noticed is, yeah, those higher wattages will net you better performance. And in some games, I mean, it's a dramatic jump. So once this is officially released, we will be doing some lower wattage testing. But again, it's still a bit early for fluid motion frames too. The next game I wanted to test here was Red Dead 2, and we are using the Vulcan back in. With the older version of Fluid Motion Frames, we couldn't get this to work unless we swapped over to DX12, and I've noticed that Vulcan does perform better on these lower-end iGPUs with this game. But I gotta say, even without frame gen, it's performing way better than I thought it would on the ROG Ally X, but there's a lot more that we can get out of this. So we'll just head in here, turn it on, I'm gonna leave everything else at auto. And this jump is pretty dramatic. This was actually one of the best that I saw so far. I mean, we're basically doubling that FPS with Red Dead Redemption 2. And given that we are using the Vulcan back in, I think AMD has done a lot of optimizations. Before, I really couldn't get it to work here unless I was using the DX12 back in. But yeah, I mean, going from an average of around 54 FPS up to over 100 FPS is a pretty nice little bump if you ask me. And, you know, with a lot of the games that I've tested here, I've done 1080p, but with this, we did go down to 900p. While I'm playing on the built-in screen of the ROG Ally X, I don't mind running my games at 900p. I still think they look good. And given that we can lower that resolution, we can actually take the settings up a bit. So instead of running at 1080 low with a lot of games, we can go to 900p medium. Here's Horizon Zero Dawn, and with the newer Forbidden West, we do have frame gen built into the game, so we can actually go into the settings, but unfortunately with this one we don't. Right now, I'm at 1080p, original settings, FSR is set to balance, and in performance mode with the X at a 25 watt TDP, we're actually up over 60, we're seeing an average of around 62. So we'll go ahead and enable fluid motion frames too, and I know that frame gen isn't for everybody. A lot of people think it's cheating, and yeah, I mean, it's actually producing frames that really aren't there to kind of smooth everything out. So yeah, it is cheating, but another thing you got to keep in mind is with these handhelds, it can really help out because we're already working with such a low-powered GPU that having that little extra can really make a big difference. And to tell you the truth, at least when it comes to single-player games, I don't mind sacrificing a little bit of frame latency for a higher frame rate. In multiplayer online games, it can really affect how you perform, especially in fighting games if you're playing something like Mortal Kombat or Street Fighter VI online. Uh, you know, using frame gen really isn't ideal, but for single player games, as long as they can bring that latency down even more, I think it's gonna work out really well for these handhelds. Here's Forza Horizon 5, we're at a 15 watt TDP, low settings, 1080p, no FSR. And it's doing okay, we can definitely take this wattage up and get much more out of this, but at 15 watts, this is how it performs at 1080p. And we're going to see how this does with fluid motion frames on, because I've always wanted to run this game at 120Hz on the ROG Ally, because we've got that 120Hz display. And at 720p, low settings with some FSR, we can actually get really close to getting a steady 120 out of it. But now you can see with fluid motion frames 2 enabled, we're getting a lot more than we did before. But I mentioned earlier in the video that through my testing so far with AMD's frame gen, be it built-in frame gen or fluid motion frames, taking that TDP up can really make a difference. We're at 15 watts right now. I'm going to take it up to 25, and I am using manual mode because I am plugged into power right now. And for some reason, using this mouse is really messing it up. I just want 25 across the board. There we go. We literally just got a jump of around 35 to 40 FPS just by upping that TDP and using fluid motion frames too. So at those lower TDPs, I mean, it can definitely help out. I would suggest using a lower resolution. 900p is great on the ROG Ally X. But when you really want to up that frame rate, taking this thing to performance with that enabled makes a huge difference.
recently Nixus went through and updated a lot of their games with AMD's frame generation built into the settings now. Spider-Man Remastered, Miles Morales, Horizon Forbidden West, and I wanted to see the difference between Fluid Motion Frames 2 and this because on the ROG Ally or even any other lower end handheld, it does make a world of difference enabling it from the settings. Right now we've got Spider-Man Remastered. I do want to turn V-Sync off. We're at medium settings, 1080p, and I've got FSR set to quality. Right down here, we can turn on the built-in frame gen, and this should give us a really big jump in performance. Yeah, I mean, we're up in the 90s now, so this is how I've been playing this game and a lot of their other games that have recently been updated, but I definitely wanted to kind of just take a look to see if Fluid Motion Frames 2 adds any better performance here. Another thing we've got here with this game and the others I've mentioned is FSR 3. And yeah, the quality, you know, using FSR is a bit better and performance is definitely much better than FSR 2. But we'll get back into the settings, turn the built-in frame gen completely off. We're going to leave everything else the same. Once we get out of here, we're going to open up the AMD settings and turn on fluid motion frames too. I don't think it's going to make much of a difference. In fact, I got a feeling it's kind of the same technology because these games weren't updated that long ago and we just got a weird glitch going on with the color. Or maybe that was my camera mode. No, I think that was a glitch. I've seen that with Intel's XESS scaling technology, but uh, not with FSR yet. It was actually in this game also. From what I can see so far, we're not seeing a huge jump in performance going from that built-in frame gen in these games to fluid motion frames too. I personally think that a lot of the new technology they used in Fluid Motion Frames 2 was already here with that built-in frame gen. There's no doubt that this is definitely helping out with the frame rate. As you can see from AMD software here, it kind of gives us the average and through these playthroughs, I mean, this is way over what we'd see without any kind of Fluid Motion Frames. So I'm pretty stoked about this and hopefully we get an official release soon, but that's going to wrap it up for this one. Again, once they fix that frame gen lag counter, I will do another video and we can test with other handhelds. Just let me know what you want to see in the comments below. But if you're interested in trying this out yourself, but if you're interested in trying this out yourself, I will leave a link to the official AMD post. Uh, you can download it directly from there. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments. Like always, thanks for watching.